this is why Bitcoin exists. This is why we, we fight and while we are in Bitcoin. It's not just number go up, right? This is because Bitcoin, because if this happens to your country and fiat payments cancel in your country, well, you're fucked unless you have Bitcoin, right? And so that's why you need to have this Bitcoin as a tool, as a bridge to bring humanity together. Because the fiat system is keeping on creating these divisions, you know, divisions, borders, arbitrary rules that exclude some people over others for some arbitrary reason. And Bitcoin actually connects us all. Bitcoin connects us all. There's no, there's no excuse anymore to not help someone who's suffering on the other part of the world because Bitcoin connects you. And the only, the only disconnection is actually in your mind and in your heart and in your intent. So that's what's beautiful. Uh, Bitcoin actually gives us the choice to do good. Greetings and salutations, my fellow plebs. My name is Walker and this is the Bitcoin podcast. The Bitcoin time chain is 852361 and the value of one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. Today's episode is Bitcoin Talk, where I talk with my guest about Bitcoin and whatever else comes up. Today, that guest is Meta Mick. Mick is the co-founder and CEO of Geyser, which, in case you didn't know, allows you to crowdfund your ideas from anywhere in the world and receive donations and product sales directly into your Bitcoin wallet. Mick and I go deep into the problem with crowdfunding platforms like GoFundMe and Kickstarter, talk about building on Bitcoin and Lightning, Noster and its future potential, and we also talk about an incredible project on Geyser right now that's raising money to aid innocent civilians in Gaza. The project has raised over 270 million sats so far. That's over $150,000 if you want to measure it in fiat. And if you want to donate, you can go to the link in the show notes to check it out on Geyser. It's projects like these where only Bitcoin can reach the people in need that completely destroy the tired old FUD narratives pushed by privileged Western elites. This was a really inspiring discussion. Thank you to Mick for coming on. And I know anyone listening, you're going to love this. Fair warning that Mick's audio quality was a little rough for the first 10 minutes, but we got it fixed and the rest of the episode sounds great after that. If you'd rather watch this show than listen, head to the show notes for links to watch on YouTube, Rumble, and now on Noster via Highlighter. But if you're like me and you prefer to just listen to your podcasts, I highly recommend you check out Fountain.fm. Not only can you send Bitcoin to your favorite podcasters to give value for value, but you can earn Bitcoin just for listening to this and other podcasts. Finally, if you like this show and want to support it, you can head to the show notes for links from my sponsors and partners. You can also go to my newly created geyser.fund slash project slash titcoin page to donate to the show via Geyser. Or you can always just zap me on Noster, you can boost this on Fountain, whatever you want. I truly appreciate everyone who has supported the show so far, either by giving sats or just by sharing the show with your network. Without further ado, let's get into this Bitcoin talk with Meta Mick. Well, Mick, welcome. Thanks so much for coming on another fucking Bitcoin podcast. It's great to have you here. It's such, good, such a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for the invite, Walker. Yeah, and you know, I I reached out. Uh, I've I've actually wanted to have you on the show for a while, but I reached out specifically uh, because of your recent piece in Bitcoin Magazine and uh, and some of the uh, the recent like pretty incredible fundraising that's happened through Geyser. Uh, for uh, for Gaza and and through the like, it's a really in, insane amount of Bitcoin that's been raised through this, and I want to get into that. I'd like to get into that in some detail, um, but maybe first, just I, I just like to start off for for people that don't know you with a, a simple question and take it however you want. But that's just who are you and how did you get here today to be doing what you're doing? I love the question. So I'm just a, a simple, humble Bitcoiner, really. Um, I've been down the orange pilling journey like most Bitcoiners. <clears throat> I've been blessed with humility. Um, and I think that's really maybe one of the key characters that helped me appreciate Bitcoin because in several points in my life, I thought I knew stuff. I thought I got a degree and that made me 
knowledgeable of something and an expert in something, then realizing that actually it was all wrong. And Bitcoin uh, kind of did that for me as well. So I studied anthropology and economics. And so I was always really kind of appreciative of the fact that, well, these are very different perspectives and um, and they could both be true or, or, or correct, but essentially knowing how to navigate uncertainty has always been something that I am comfortable with um, and navigating mainly uncertainty. And so, yeah, I discovered Bitcoin in 2016, um, 2016, 2017, and um, really got to, to really know it better in 20, um, was it 2018, 2019 when I read the Bitcoin standard. <clears throat> But overall, at that point, I was just working in in the tech space uh, as a as a as a UX designer. So I was just a designer uh, working for technology companies, financial financial companies like, like big banks. You know, building you know tools that people can use. Basically, I've always been a fan of user centric design and building technology that lifts people up right that that brings people forward that moves humanity forward i'm a big believer that technology is how we bring humanity forward and reach you know uh, lift everyone up at the same time the technology is a democratizing tool uh that that lifts all boats um so with that i kind of saw bitcoin from, from a similar lens and uh i was then Kind of keen to kind of explore the space. Ended up working for a year in a, in a friend of friend of a friend of mine started a small a small company, which then ended up pivoting to being an Ethereum company. So I was like, where am I? <laughs> what am I doing? This is really not what I signed up for. Um, I'm not really like you know this is not going to go anywhere. At the same time, I was running my node, my Bitcoin node, and I was re- you know reading all the stuff about you know, Ethereum proof of stake changes and, you know, what that meant for decentralization. I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Uh, but if there was one positive thing of that entire experience, I'm sure there were, there were many, uh, uh, but I also didn't feel, you know, at home. But there was one positive thing. I was realizing how much development and how much kind of creative uh, people there were around the Ethereum space. Um, also, thanks to these kind of crowdfunding platforms that existed uh, on Ethereum, uh, including like Mirror and 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 Gitcoin. And I realized like, in, and there's no such thing in Bitcoin. There's no like decent platform that in also uses Lightning for creatives and to, 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 to monetize and make it make it easy for them to monetize. Uh, of course, all, they all had their own token and they all were shilling it and it was just disgusting. But what I did appreciate was this fact of just having a platform that enabled creators to, you know, to kind of uh, fundraise their ideas and like make them make their ideas happen. What Bitcoiners were doing, they were like, like Neanderthals just sharing QR codes on Twitter. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> so I was like, I, you know, it was upon me to like try to do something about it. So I ended up producing some mockups of, of a platform that uh, I was thinking about and uh, a crowdfunding platform and then reached out to uh, a friend of mine, Stelios, Ended up ended up being a co-founder and CTO of Geyser, and so together we were able to initially bootstrap this venture for a, you know a year, and then eventually get some investor funding. Uh, and we were really keen to get him sure that we was only Bitcoin investors that would be joining the uh, this venture. So yeah, it's been a crazy journey, man. It's been a crazy journey. I'm absolutely every day I wake up, I'm like I cannot believe you know where I am. What an honor. Um, but it's yeah, it's been it's been great so far, and uh, uh, yeah, hopefully that summarizes it. No, it it does very well, and I, I always appreciate the background. Uh, I can imagine you felt perhaps like a little bit of a fish out of water, uh, surrounded by a lot of Ethereans uh, at the at the time. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and you know, I, I think uh, well, I'd like to get into kind of the the nuts and bolts of Geyser a little bit, but you know, some people may ask, well. Why does a platform like Geyser use Bitcoin at all? Why why not use you know Ethereum or or you know Solana? Because isn't Solana so fast? And so I mean, why did you decide to to really build on and around Bitcoin and only Bitcoin, not to have other altcoins or shitcoins in the mix? Like, what made Bitcoin fit for this purpose? Yeah, really good question. Uh, because the mission is to empower and emancipate 
the creator economy and the online creators, right? So the question is why then Bitcoin? Well, because it relates to our vision and our vision of the internet is a vision where Bitcoin is the money of the internet, where everything else will go to zero um, and where, you know, in time it will take time. And I think there's actually a role for other things in the sort of short to medium terms, um, like maybe stable coins, but um, but for for the long run, we're we're in we're in for the long run. You know, we we see Bitcoin as being the best um, monetary instrument for on on online um, online peer to peer exchange. As simple as that. And not only that, but also Lightning. So well, Bitcoin is actually the <laughs> is the truth uh, is the, is the is essentially this 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 ledger of truth. Lightning is actually that um peer-to-peer -peer, um kind of transactional layer of money on the internet and so when you start seeing that 80 percent of all your transactions use light on, on a bitcoin platform use lightning you're like okay well bitcoin is great for sending high amount of, of money but for the for the creator economy for people um you know fundraising for initiative uh well lightning will be just a, it's just essentially orders of magnitude uh, a, be, a better means of, of payment where you don't have to worry about fees as much, where the payments are instant, where the um, you know you don't have to wait ten minutes to receive it, um, where you can send a one one satoshi microtransaction, um, and there's no like you know fear of sending money to the wrong address, which is also a big a big concern. So yeah, all this. And this really kind of exactly as you pointed out relates to me running my node and understanding what that felt like and what that was about and realizing that any platform built you know for the for the next generation for the newer era will need to integrate lightning uh, deeply and so that's that's how we built geyser geyser is lightning native it's natively built on lightning um, you plug your lightning address you plug your node and then every transaction goes over to lightning um and uh we then have on-chain on-chain payments as well but then again even the on-chain payments are routed over to lightning um sorry you're good man got excited there uh hey, no we worries. also we also do have uh an announcement i'm not gonna say too much yet because it's not it's not something that's live yet but we do also we do also plan to integrate fiat payments in some form uh, but in a way that again is lightning native. So imagine a world where the creator gets paid in Bitcoin, but the the funder can pay the payment payment with fiat. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. But that's kind of what the world we see, right? So enable payments in however way you want. You know, well, fiat on chain, uh, Bitcoin maybe stable coins, but then everything ends up on Lightning because Lightning because then every lightning wallet will have their own optionality of how to receive the payment right if you're in the united states strike will enable you know instant swap to fiat if you're in, in nigeria you can receive in, you can enable instant swap to the nigerian nida and so forth so forth and in, in the philippines pouch can enable instant swap over to um to their philippine currency so bitcoin and lightning ends up being just this like this network um this abstracting abstract uh, payment layer that uh, can then plug into every um, every region with its own um, uh, on ramps. So Bitcoin, you know, guys are operating at a, at a layer can fulfill um, transactions uh, seamlessly, and um, and yeah, and and then also at the same time so in terms of the the, the sending, in terms of the receiving. Sorry for the receiving, for the sending. Uh, again, we want to enable payments to come through in many different ways as well. I love it. So, one thing I, I think is kind of interesting is that you hear a lot uh, from various people who shall not be named that Lightning doesn't work, Lightning doesn't scale, Lightning's just kind of this funny toy that Bitcoiners like to use, uh, you know, as an excuse uh, to make up for all of Bitcoin layer one's inadequacies when it comes to uh, speed and uh, and and small payments. But you have just indicated you guys are a company that is lightning native. You are built on lightning. 
So, I mean, can you speak to a little bit about that? Because obviously lightning is is working for you guys. So question one would be, where do, where do you think this disconnect comes from with people saying, oh, light, you know, lightning doesn't work, lightning doesn't work, you know, buy my shit coin, uh, versus your actual experience building a lightning native company? Yeah, yeah, really good question. So I think probably some of the big, bigger influence for me has come from reading uh, Nick Batia's The Layered Money, um, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and and that, and that and I think definitely a few other people and thinkers, but Nick Batia really lays it out very clearly <laughs> by explaining that every monetary system is built on top of, on, on these layers and every layer fulfills a particular uh, uh, set of, um, of functions within a set of of, of trade-offs and the function of bitcoin is to pro provide this unchangeable truth unchangeable universal truth that we can all agree upon and that's really things like 21 million right uh, things like um you know this decentralization everyone can run their node and so forth with bitcoin cash people were like you know what we're gonna sacrifice some of the scalability problems for um for just like increasing the block size but you know that just leads to you know making it much more expensive for people to run their nodes um and so not anymore uh, even if bitcoin scales like it's you're still gonna have to change the rules like the the foundational rules again which again doesn't i mean to my mind doesn't make sense of sacrificing that key property of bitcoin as 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 hard money you're sacrificing that by applying these really really hard changes that that could lead to capture down the road so for me lightning is is not perfect um uh because we still have you know some set of trade-offs that we decided to 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 offset so a lot of them relate to say for example um yeah just the like the challenges with lightning now a lot of the providers are are custodial and that's that's not great <clears throat> but it all it, these are all trade-offs that are happening on 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 other layers so people can still opt out of lightning and decide to go over to, to bitcoin on chain and still that truth is not sacrificed that sort of unchangeable property of of, of money is is not being sacrificed so uh yeah so that that for me remained really really important and uh just like i think also the other answer to that is just using bitcoin lightning is just once you start using it you 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 can't go back the ux of it is truly phenomenal um, it's just so much more, I used to say like using Bitcoin is, is painful because that UX of it, but also like you're this, often by using Bitcoin, you actually are discarding a lot of Bitcoin, but it, but spending sats is joyful because sending 21 sats, it's not only a, a incredible UX, but also you're sending smaller amounts and it just, in the end, you're not paying attention how many zaps you're giving your sort of things equal out in the end, you know? So that's sort of how I felt about it. And I, I love that and completely agree with uh, you know the zaps that are flowing in and out. It's like I'm not I'm not counting that when I'm you know using Noster. It's just yeah, zaps go in, zaps go out, and uh, and you're just giving value to things you find valuable, and it's it's pretty frictionless too. Like yeah. and as you said, sure there are trade offs. Of course there are, and that's kind of the whole uh, the the whole scaling debate, right? is what trade-offs are you willing to make at the base layer, if any, versus what trade-offs do you take on the layer twos and the layer threes? And it seems, you know, a lot of the, the shit coins out there have optimized for maximum scalability and transaction throughput at layer one at the cost of security and decentralization, which, okay, that fine if you want to do that, but unless you have the solid foundation, then, I would argue that the rest of it doesn't really matter in, unless yeah. you have the sound money at the core the rest of it is just it, i mean it's just shit. like <laughs> yeah i'm afraid so as well like like i used to say as well something i used to say is like uh, it's better to have custodial bitcoin than to have non-custodial shit coins because you're you're custodying something that is worthless uh down the road so yeah, I think so too. I, I like that. I, I like that a lot. I think that's a, a good way of describing it. Uh, so yeah. I appreciate I appreciate the background and kind of the also the discussion on lightning there and just kind of how that relates to you guys. And I, I want to kind of go into a little bit here, just uh, the problem with traditional 
crowdfunding platforms like GoFundMe or Kickstarter, to name a couple that are, are pretty well known. And then once we kind of talk about those problems, okay, how does Geyser slash Bitcoin fix this? Because I think a lot of people, especially in the you know so-called Western or developed world, may say, you know, why, why do you need a, a Bitcoin crowdfunding platform? Like just just use GoFundMe or Kickstarter and have the money transferred to your bank. So, so can you talk a little bit about what is the problem that Geyser was trying to solve as it relates to GoFundMe, Kickstarter, th uh, think, you know, any other crowdfunding platform you can yeah. think of? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, when I first started looking into it, I, I, I didn't really quite understand how, how big the problem was. Um, but as soon as I started getting my hands dirty, it, it, was, it was obvious that something like this needed to exist. So first of all, Kickstarter and GoFundMe are only available in like 30 countries. Like actually, I think GoFundMe is available in 21 countries or something like that. That's, that's very, very low. And that's because they depend on payment providers like Stripe, uh, and PayPal that have all sorts of conditions and um, don't actually operate in all these different countries. Like they're rolling out slowly. So actually I think Stripe now works in 50 countries, but still for some reason GoFundMe doesn't operate in all these other countries. <clears throat> uh, some of it is maybe risk assessment. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, for Kickstarter, maybe a bit of it is, is, is um, the problems associated with like uh, shipping as well. Uh, but really, it's 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 kind of a, it's kind of ridiculous to me. And like we're seeing, you know, and to to, to respond to that right away, well, guys, we're seeing forty percent of our funding going to countries that are that don't have fundraising available in the traditional platforms. So wow. just that's that's not to say that there is no demand for it. There's a ton of demand, <laughs> but. Um, but it just it's not it's not a seamless thing. There are platforms, for example, that are like region specific. There are some platforms based in some countries in Africa, like Kenya and, and, and Tanzania. There's one platform I discovered recently that's only available in Brazil. But then <clears throat> to connect all of them, there's really not one that uh, that works like that, like borderlessly. And part of the reason as well is because again, because Stripe only works in some some of these countries. You'd have to go in and have one, like go to every single bank and every single country and create a partnership with them of some sort. And even just like the partnership, like that is an insane amount of work and effort. Like imagine having to hire like five different people to go out and like the different con different continents and just try to create these banking partnerships. That is insane, <laughs> insane. With Bitcoin, it's almost too easy. We don't have to ask for permission. We just fucking build it, you know? It's just incredible. Um, and then, you know, that's that's to say that, you know, that said, we still do, because we're still based in the United States, we still have to f follow sanctioned countries, so uh, sanctioned regulations. So we do not operate in, say, like Cuba, Russia, Iran, uh, and so forth. And, you know, we still have to follow the law. Um, uh, and we still do as much compliance checks as possible to make sure that Bitcoins are not coming from like sanctioned addresses or sanctioned countries or sanctioned individuals. So, uh, it's an important kind of, you know, um, thing to add, uh, you know, you have, you, when you're operating as a company, you have to, you have to make these, uh, these important decisions. So, but yeah, but apart from, you know, if we follow the rules, you know, there's nothing that says you cannot operate you know, in Nigeria or in Africa, you know, uh, it's just, it's just inconceivable that in a world where you can send emails <clears throat> to people across the world instantly for free, you cannot do that with money. And Geyser makes it so obvious. Um, so, so that's the, 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 the borderless side. And then there's obviously the censorship. The censorship is also a very big deal as we saw in Canada with the, the trucker convoy, um, uh, I think if I remember correctly, um, apart from like the protests, um, uh, I think $10 million were frozen from the Canadian government uh, uh, by reaching out to go, so they reached out to GoFundMe, froze $10 million. And I think the funds were given back to eventually to the funders. Um, uh, but the fact that that could happen, that they could just take the money 
uh, just seemed uh, b- b- bizarre to me. So how we approach that is that Geyser doesn't custody any funds. Geyser is not a money transmitter. We do not control the funds at any point in time. The funds go to the creators peer to peer from the contributor to the creator. We are really just an interface. You know, um, we don't we don't touch the money in any way or control it. So that makes censorship impossible from the monetary perspective of things, right? We do not freeze, we cannot freeze funds. As per controlling the projects, you know, guys are projects are on Oster, um, as in, if you look at the projects, every project has an Oster and pub. Um, so again, it's even from that perspective, you know, you could take your pro- Geyser project and sec and take it over somewhere else. If you have a project on Geyser and you want to take those sats and put them somewhere safe for the long haul, or if you have your Bitcoin on an exchange and you're starting to feel a little bit uneasy, rightly so, head to bitbox.swiss slash walker and use promo code walker for 5% off the fully open source Bitcoin only Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. Then again, Get your Bitcoin off the exchange or wherever they are right now and into your own self-custody. The BitBox O2 is truly easy as hell to use, whether you're brand new to Bitcoin and it's your very first hardware wallet, or you're a seasoned psychopath and you have more than you'd like to admit. It is Bitcoin only. And again, it is fully open source. You can head to their GitHub and verify that for yourself. There is no need to trust me or to trust BitBox. When you go to bitbox.swiss slash walker and use the promo code walker, Not only do you get 5% off a great piece of open source hardware, but you also help support this fucking podcast. So thank you. Now, a lot of you listening to this show may already be deep down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, but if you're listening to this podcast and perhaps feeling a bit overwhelmed, don't sweat it. We've all been there, and bitcoinconsulting.us has you covered. Some people go down the Bitcoin rabbit hole completely solo, but others want someone to guide them and help them a bit along this journey. If you're one of the latter, again, go to bitcoinconsulting.us. Whether you are an individual and you want someone to help you with your personal Bitcoin strategy, or you're a company and you want help integrating Bitcoin payments, implementing private projects, or just need some general contractor services, bitcoinconsulting.us can take care of you. Again, go to bitcoinconsulting.us and book a consultation today. That's bitcoinconsulting.us. Dot US. I think it's such a, the trucker protests were such a great eye-opening moment for a lot of people that uh, not only is the money in your bank not yours, but the money that is being held custodied by any sort of centralized you know, service provider, for example, GoFundMe, is not yours. And at the request of a government, that can be frozen, taken away from you. Uh, at least it was given back to the people who, who donated it, but it's like Bitcoin was the only thing that ended up being able to reach you know, those, those truckers. And I think that that's such a powerful thing. And you see that sort of story, you know, kind of repeat itself uh, you know, over and over and especially in more authoritarian regimes. And I'm curious if you see uh, what other projects on Geyser that you see that are kind of in this same vein where, because you mentioned 40% of the projects on Geyser are from countries where they can't even use something like GoFundMe. So obviously there's a huge need for it there. But what are some of the interesting or really kind of, I guess, inspiring projects that you've seen on Geyser? And maybe we can just talk a little bit about some of those. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, Actually, just a a clarification before I answer the question directly. Uh, if I spoke to Ben, who helped to manage the, the trucker fundraise using Bitcoin, and I believe they were using Tallycoin at the time, um, which was essentially enabled uh, Bitcoin on chain donations. Uh, I think in some cases they were essentially taking the Bitcoins they were receiving and putting them into, I think, then sending them out on Coinbase addresses. And if I remember correctly, they were able to go to Coinbase, so the government also went even that far into censoring Bitcoin donations using Coinbase accounts and so froze Coinbase accounts. And I think if I remember correctly, I can't remember if it was one third of funds that did go through and then on two or one third of funds that actually were censored. 
uh, one of the two, I don't remember exactly that. So let's say 50-50, one made us 50% were, were censored using, using Bitcoin. From that perspective, Lightning is still advantageous because there is there is more privacy. Um, but also, I guess it's just not still an undiscovered, <laughs> undiscovered kind of world for, for regulators. Um, that said, you know, still not enough, right? Still, it's still the government could still go to, you know, Wall of Satoshi and 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 uh, ask for uh, for certain accounts to be taken down at some points. Uh, but that's where I think there's a, the ability to. That's where maybe eCash ends up being uh, useful. And that's most importantly, though, non custodial li non custodial Lightning solutions end up being uh, really good. And non custodial Lightning application like Phoenix, like Zeus. Um, they can scale Bitcoin to like a hundred million users, right? Like that, you know, we're still good for, you know, another five, five to 10 years in terms of Bitcoin moving up in terms of adoption. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of point out the clarification just to discuss that we haven't figured it all out, guys. Like we need builders, we need smart people to fucking figure this shit out. Um, you know, you know, uh, we have to keep advancing Bitcoin in terms of this, this layered approach. We have to improve your trade-off. We have to improve privacy. So if you're smart and you're listening to this, like we need you, we need you to build on Bitcoin, stop everything you're doing and, and, and help, help, help Bitcoin adoption, help Bitcoin and humanity. Um, uh, but <clears throat> what did I want to say? So to your question though, what are some exciting projects that I like to see on Geyser? Well, I think as you probably saw from the last article, I think the Gaza project has just been absolutely incredible like this this one man was just a simple guy a taxi driver who just has been actually using geyser even from before the the recent um the recent crisis so he was actually already before improving his proof of work he was a bitcoiner and he was giving money to people kids and in, in hospitals and he was showing the proof of work and buying toys and buying kind of fun things and uh and then with the with the October seventh um happening he then started essentially actually providing essential goods um water food uh shelter to innocent civilians in uh in, in need so so i mean just like the it reminds me of just i think you guys did even a a really interesting um I think one of your skits about the 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 relationship between Bitcoin and CBDCs, looking at Lord of the Rings as a as a metaphor. Yep, yep. I feel like this is another Lord of the Rings kind of environment, uh, kind of analogy, because he's a bit like a hobbit. He's just like simple, simple man, the simple, honest, very, very, you know, faithful and optimistic that guy, and he's just you know, using this incredible tool of Bitcoin to do good to people around him. And um, yeah, he's a bit like a Frodo uh, of, of the situation. And Bitcoiners are, I don't know, like the sort of people around the world just helping to save lives. So yeah, I think just the extent to which this project has, has blown up has been a key... Um, yeah, a key, you know, makes it makes it one of the most important projects that Geyser has ever hosted because of the humanitarian impact it's had, because of like the the symbolic impact as well. Like GoFundMe, Kickstarter, all closed down access to crowdfunding to people in Gaza, <clears throat> but because they're not a sanctioned country, they are not. There's no reason why we we cannot. The only thing we're doing is that we're just being a little bit more careful in the, the people that use our platform. We, we do go, we do ask for KYC for people in, in that region because of the high risk that it poses uh, for, for us. Um, but, you know, having done all the due diligence with Youssef and seeing that he is who he say he says he is, and uh, he doesn't appear on any, um, any sanctions list or, and there's no reason at all to suspect that he is a, a criminal in, in any shape or form, um, then this makes it even more powerful of a statement because it shows what Bitcoin can do and what Bitcoin companies and Bitcoin ethos can do. It, it's, it's really incredible. And I, I had donated to this project, like the first time I saw it, uh, 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 Fumble, right, had, had posted about it on Twitter early on and, and tagged me. And I was like, well, that's, 
you know, that's, that's great. He was showing some initial proof of work already. Like, look here, you know, here's the photos, here's the videos of what this is going to. This is literally going to food and water and, and tents and things like that for, for women and, and, and children who need this. And I, I just looked again at the project today on Geyser. It's at almost 270 million sats. It's like a dollar value of over $150,000 contributed in total, which is just an in incredible thing like I, I saw that he's like he's buying a, a water a truck to transport water on now like at scale like that is really insane because this is a place where people are absolutely suffering and living in conditions that we cannot imagine and this is not to make any sort i'm not even gonna not even gonna go there making a a political statement about what's what's happening there but i think that uh, I would hope that there's no sides when it comes to innocent women and children not being able to get fresh water, food, shelter, and basic necessities. Like I would hope that that that, that doesn't get politicized. Sadly, it does. But from my perspective, this project is absolutely incredible. It's giving help to people who really need it, and it's being done in a way where again, it's, it, it's very transparent. Like, I mean, you know, if you want, you can obviously donate anonymously, but you can also see, you know, maybe everybody who donates to this will someday be put on another watch list. I'm sure many of us are on them already, uh, for, for the dastardly deeds that we've done with Bitcoin, uh, like sending it around peer to peer, heaven forbid, but, but this is a really incredible story. And, and so maybe, I mean, I'd like to dig into this a little bit deeper because again, uh, almost 270 million sats that's like is that one of the biggest uh, funding projects that are biggest funded projects that you've had on geyser have there been any over that at that point or is this like one of the top i think you can probably see it on the on the landing page on geyser.fund i think it's top three i think but in wow. terms of dollar denominated value so you know there were projects that were you know received a hundred thousand dollars like 10 months ago and Bitcoin price was, was half of what it is now. Right. Sure. So, but if you think about the dollar value, I think so. I think it's the most funded uh, project on Geyser and wow. it speaks to honestly, like the, the, the power of the Bitcoin community um, and the, the, the amount of, 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 of sharing that has happened. And I think kind of to your point about let's not get political here. Uh, absolutely. This is a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, these are people that are suffering, um, innocent civilians. There's mostly kids and families that are being involved here. Um, we have to like acknowledge what it is and, and support and, and make sure that this type of inhumanity doesn't, doesn't happen, that people don't have to get stuck inside a, a, a war conflict. And I think Fumble could probably come here if you want to get more uh, get more into the weeds of like the reason I'm not an expert on, on, on the subject, uh, but I did have the opportunity to speak to, to Youssef, um, and, and fumble and, 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 and really dig into his perspective. And it's just, what's most amazing is just how little political even he is. Like he's just a humble guy who suffered a lot and still has hope for the future. To me, that was just the most insane thing, man. Just after speaking with him for an hour about how he's helped 20,000 innocent families, how he's helped, you know, I think thousands of orphan children just like get access to basic supplies. And he has like um, an entire, you know, group of, of, um, of, of children that are uh, orphaned that live basically with him and his family. Um, the situation is really, really dire. And I urge, I urge everyone to to look into it and, and learn more about it. Um, uh, but what's most spectacular is just when I say, when I ask them, like, do you still have hope that, you know, life will go back as normal? Um, and for them, for him, normal has never been great either. But uh, he, he says, of course, of course I have hope. And it's just incredible. Like every day I, I've been waking up recently and just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm really privileged, you know, to not be in a situation like that, because it could be happening to all of us, you're just born in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, and massacres happen around you. That's not good. That's not good. And to me, it helped me appreciate Bitcoin as, as something more, you know, Bitcoin as, as a humanitarian technology, really, um, as a as a as a technology for 
for karma in some way like you know it was bad you know he you, know, you are you know where there is fest evil festering and inhumanity and 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 uh, darkness bitcoin is a light um i don't want to get like it's not religious or anything but it really is like it really is light it really is healing it's healing people in a way the fiat does not allow you cannot send fiat payments to, to people in gaza because in gaza people a lot of people's bank accounts have actually been completely frozen because they the gazan bank accounts rely on the on the israeli shekel which is controlled by uh, israeli banks and and most this is from what i hear i don't know if it's true entirely i've done some digging it does seem to be correct but in, there may be some nuance but what it seems to be is that most bank accounts like online bank accounts have been closed so the little people had is just unavailable so people are really just relying on on physical banknotes uh on 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 basically bitcoin and crypto wallets of which most people use bitcoin and 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 stable coins probably even more stable coins than they, than they use bitcoin um to be to be transparent here um and and lightning wallets as well and um i i would probably dare to say like this is the most this is the biggest um like cryptocurrency crowdfunding campaign in Gaza that has that has that has, that has happened um and all of this thanks to Yusuf and his hard his hard work and his honesty and his transparency and fumble that has has helped them and make it happen um one other thing I wanted to mention uh was the uh oh, fuck I forgot I'm sorry <laughs> that's that's okay hey it'll come back to you but yeah. and i i wanted to, to touch on a couple of points there because first of all i think this is incredible because yusuf is showing his proof of work throughout the entire thing and it's all being posted very publicly by by fumble it's all out there in the open for anyone to see this isn't this isn't some we you know weird uh you know ngo that yeah, is exactly. you know, taking taking donations and you're like wait how much of this is actually going to the people i'm supposedly donating to like i don't know five percent ten percent maybe is any of it actually making it to those people or is it just lining the people's pockets of those who are you know close to the the money fountain because i think that's a huge problem in traditional ngos um you know you then you've got uh organizations like hrf which operates a lot in bitcoin which is, I think, a hugely transparent and great way for NGOs to operate. I mean, in my mind, it's like, uh, you know, the the thing, if, if you're not mining Bitcoin, you're wasting energy. Well, it's like, if you're not using Bitcoin for humanitarian aid, you're probably committing fraud. Uh, I, I, you know, perhaps a, a bit of a over-the-top statement, but it's like, why wouldn't you use this tool that allows for such transparency and is able to reach people that fiat cannot? And then as it relates to the, you know, bank accounts being shut down, Again, this is just like I can't imagine. I'm sure that the the reasons are, uh, or the the stated reasons are, well, we don't know what whose bank accounts are controlled by Hamas. You know, we don't know whose bank accounts are going to be used to to uh, murder more innocent Israelis. And it's like, you know, fine, we can. There's always going to be justifications for cutting people off from the financial system. You had that with the with the trucker protests. You have that across the world all the time with any sort of uh, you know anti anti government or anti state anti regime protesters. What's the first thing that happens? They get cut off from the monetary network. They get they get chopped right off, and there's no going back. And so that's why these sorts of stories give me so much hope, because it's a case where even if people get cut off, get blacklisted, get shut down from using traditional fiat monetary networks, Bitcoin exists and it's not going away. And even if, you know, they end up, uh, heaven forbid, somehow, you know, shutting down Geyser, if, if the powers that be come for Geyser, I, I hope that they don't. And I, I think it's smart that you guys are, uh, that you unfortunately have to operate within the existing paradigm because it's the reality of the situation, right? You're not trying to get thrown in jail. You're not trying to get shut down. But even if you guys did somehow get shut down, well, people can still use Bitcoin, you know, and, and even if somehow the Lightning Network all magically goes offline, well, people can still use Bitcoin on chain. Like you can still come back to that base layer. And I think that's so important that people have an exit 
They have, I mean, more than an exit, they have a life raft. Because in a world where we are cracking down, not we, but the state is cracking down more and more on any sort of dissent, you know, and where to just try and live your life and exist and feed your family can somehow be made uh, difficult by the state. We need Bitcoin so much. And it's just really inspiring to see people like Yusuf uh, truly doing the work, showing the proof of work and making actual change. And and shout out to everybody who's donated. I'll, I'll make sure to link the, uh, the Geyser page in the show notes here. So if you're listening to this and you uh, want to learn more about the story, I'll, I'll link your article as well that you did for, for Bitcoin Mags. It's, it's really excellent. And uh, I, I encourage people to go check it out. Look at the proof of work and then see, see what you decide to do. But luckily, Geyser makes it very easy to send some sats, uh, large or small amounts, uh, over there to, to people who really need it. So it's awesome what you guys are doing, and it's awesome that Yusuf is really putting in an incredible amount of work to help people that are in dire need of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, really well said, man. And uh, yeah, kind of double clicking on some points you made there. One thing is, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the entire humanitarian apparatus is incredibly inefficient. And this is an example of, of a grassroots humanitarianism, right? It's, it's peer to peer donations uh in the, in the in the most truly in the, in the most spectacular way yusuf is just a guy living there and is literally donating all the money he has and to give you another maybe piece from excerpts from the from the article that i really captured me was i when i got on a call with yusuf he had just received around fifty thousand dollars that month and i was like dude you received fifty thousand dollars this month like you must have so much that you can do now and it's like that was that was the last month this month I've received very very little and <clears throat> I'm you know running out like that's at that's at the level we're talking about here that that's a level of need and, and destruction that is happening right now he's yeah that's crazy you just read fifty thousand dollars and you're you're because you're worried about tomorrow and you're thinking about the last week the time flows differently um for for for, for him in that situation um but yeah, so to say that there is no, there's no like uh, other third party. And so he's been doing such a good job for the community in that region that the United Nations Agency responsible for the Palestinian people, UNRWA, has actually appointed him uh, essentially to support the UNRWA effort in, in, in the region where he's at. It's like that's the extent to which he was not only, um, you know, uh, doing you know receiving donations effectively from the bitcoin community he was actually doing even superior work to people to the to the to the, to the humanitarian effort on the ground right and, and and leveraging resources he bought something like two thousand chickens uh from egypt that were important because it's like you cannot basically trade as an individual you cannot as an individual buy something from another country but if you have a business license you can buy in bulk and that's what that's what enabled him to do these bigger operations uh, in terms of uh, working as a, as, a, as a business. So, yeah, now we're talking about a truck he has and, you know, all those photos of him providing water and supplies to innocent civilians. I mean, I think if we are if we get to the point that the government comes after this type of campaign, we are really at the end game. I mean, if something like this would become something watched for because of like optics and things like that, what? What are you talking about? Like, this is it. This is why Bitcoin exists. This is why, you know, this is why we, we fight um, and while we are in Bitcoin. It's not just number go up, right? This is because Bitcoin, because if this happens to your country and fiat payments cancel in your country, well, you're fucked unless you have Bitcoin, right? And so that's why you need to have this Bitcoin as a tool, as a bridge to bring humanity together because the fiat system is keeping and creating these divisions you know divisions borders you know um arbitrary rules that exclude some people over others for some arbitrary reason and bitcoin actually connects us all bitcoin connects us all and we're just you know there's there's no there's no there's no excuse anymore to not help someone who's suffering 
on the other part of the world because Bitcoin connects you and the only the only um, the only disconnection is actually in your mind and in your heart and and in your intent so that's what's beautiful uh, Bitcoin actually gives us the choice to do good amen man that's really well said and I think that this is again something I want to drill into again is that you know you talk about okay this may seem like it's happening on the other you know it is happening on the other side of the world depending on where you live right uh but uh, as gladstein would say check your financial privilege because you you know for those of us who have been uh you know grew, were born and grew up in a, in a you know in the so-called developed world in the western world we are incredibly privileged most of us have not had to deal with large-scale financial censorship. We haven't had to deal with hyperinflation. Yeah, we've dealt with some pretty bad inflation, but in the U.S., we export uh, the dollars that we get rid of the worst of our inflation, right? And I think it's important for people to remember that this can happen anywhere, as long as uh, if if a you know if a fiat system exists, it is only a matter of time before you are somehow cut off from it for not for you know supporting the wrong candidate for uh, having the wrong background for spending your money on the wrong thing for saying the wrong thing online it is only a matter of time and it is would take an incredible amount of hubris to believe that just because you've been okay to this point you're going to be okay and so you don't need to worry about this and you know what what what's the big deal you know why why do you need bitcoin it's like to me these are the examples of why bitcoin is so powerful yes it's it's the store of value as as the the base layer of it all we've established that it, that is key to actually being able to have a good money that you can use but right next to that is you need a money that can reach outside of the fiat system because if it's within the fiat system, it's subject to capture. And as we've seen again, in Gaza, all over the world, all over, all over Africa, all over South America, even in fucking Canada, like Canada, America's boring neighbor that lives in their attic, like even Canada engages in financial repression and financial and monetary censorship. Like wake the fuck up people. This can happen to you. And so I think it's, it's really important to tell these stories and to show people that, look, this is the reality day to day on the ground for a huge part of humanity. They don't have the luxury of having a low time preference because literally they're just trying to get through the day alive and hopefully with some food in their belly and maybe some, uh, some sort of a roof over their head, probably not a roof, probably a tarp or a tent, but at least something. And so, yeah, uh, Thank you for for shedding light on this, and I think I might need to have have fumble on here to to dig into it in greater detail because, yeah, I think these are these are stories that people need to hear because mm -hmm. if you have if you have a mostly functioning brain, these kind of stories should wake you up a little bit. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. I hope, definitely. And for me, that's been the case. Like I've always known, and to not get too 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 into it, but I've always had this this feeling that there was a you know a all sorts of like violence happening um uh, in in that area um but now we're beyond that now we're talking about genocide happening in the region for, from from what i've seen and i think to go deeper fumble probably be a really good person to to speak to because he has a deep deep insight into the area he's he's been there he has that historical context he he's done a lot of the reading of the literature and could definitely had a ton of value i'd love, love to listen to that yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to reach out because I think again it's that's the whole point of having any sort of a platform is to be able to use it for some sort of good, um, no matter what size that platform may be. Yeah. But well, I I really I really appreciate you digging into that a little bit. And again, I'll link the donation page on uh, in the show notes. I'll link the article as well. Uh, it, it was a really really great one, and I could honestly uh, could dig into this. Uh, 
all day. Um, and, and, and perhaps uh, that, that is exactly what I'll do with fumble. Uh, but I do want to get into a couple other topics with you. If we can, if we can switch gears a little bit. Um, and this is still kind of on the, well, it's very much on the freedom censorship resistant, uh, side of things, but to talk about Nostra a little bit, because I, I forget exactly when you guys rolled out the feature for Nostra integration, but, uh, you know, it, you have it up there now. Like today, I, for instance, right before this, I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to create a, a funding page for, for this podcast. Um, and because, you know what, why, why not? Um, if people find it valuable, that's another avenue for them to give value. And I just did my, my sign in with, with Noster. Um, as I had done for a previous, when I was running the, uh, uh stop the presses uh, campaign, which I need to, I need to re up again. Um, but it's so easy now, you know, I just used my Albi extension. I used, uh, used it to sign in with Noster and boom, I'm, I'm connected. So can you guys talk a little bit about, uh, why you decided to start adding that Noster integration? Uh, what other kind of, uh, features are possible because of that? And then just from a, a larger standpoint, you know, zooming out a little bit, uh, how do you see Noster working alongside Bitcoin, uh, both working within Geyser uh, kind of adding to your toolkit, adding to the toolkits of people who are out there wanting to raise money. Right. Well, yeah, good question. So, I mean, Nostr is uh, is a fantastic, really, you know, rearchitecting the web. Really, that's how I see it. I see, I see it as essentially rearchitecting the web, and um, it, I, I think. It, there's a lot to talk about there. I mean, it, it's, it's, we, so I guess we'll start from the scratch. We started integrating Nostra uh, login, I think actually a year, a year ago. And then in November of last year, we released this functionality where actually every Geyser project is on, is on Nostr in a, in a custodial way. So we still store the NSAC um, uh, because, well, we already were custodying the project, right? But now we provide the, it's kind of connected to a private key. So every, Every kind of uh, action uh, happening on Geyser is still um, either signed or will be signed uh, over Noster. So that what it enables is essentially interoperability with other crowdfunding clients uh, that may arise in the future. But I do think further, you know, the the, the vision and the future of Noster is actually people owning their own private keys and owning their own data. So either us going deeper in that integration, allowing users to kind of connect their own public, yeah, sorry, their, their own um, their own profiles, um, and create projects that are non-custodial and so forth. Um, I guess uh, where we are now, though, is just we're focusing on just other things because Nostra still is is really quite small. Um, so it doesn't so yeah. Although it's, it excites us deeply, it excites us really deeply. We also have to be realistic right now in terms of what what type of the roles can it enable for Geyser, which is uh, again a company that has to has to float. Um, so for now, we're, we're gonna probably just keep concentrating on on just Bitcoin and Lightning and the power the power of that, and and then I think as we grow, definitely Nostra is something that we see um, becoming incredibly incredibly. Uh, useful in the, in the, in sort of the middle term in a, in a few years. Um, what, per, what excites me particularly is just, uh, is like what it means in terms of the, like the financial system. So like we, with all this data available publicly over relays, you have a situation where right now every, every, every social data is, is captured by by platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. But now that data would be open, it might be really interesting to see the development of like financial tools, financial services, like on top of that data. So things like peer-to-peer -peer lending or equity, you know, and crowdfunding is really just the the, the main layer for us. Zaps are actually, Zaps are just uh, essentially the, the, the groundwork. Zaps are tips, right? And on top of tips, I would argue you have actually donations for that have an intent. It's not just like, oh, I made this cute, you know, nice tweet, you zap me, but it's like, I want to make this happen, let's do it, right? That's that's crowdfunding, that's geyser. On top of that, you have sales, like you sell and buy products, 
which guys are also offers, which could also be over, over an officer, which would be exciting. On top of that, then you have more, more complex financial system like lending. Okay, you, I'm giving you money, I'll give you the money back. You know, I imagine all over an officer. And then on top of that, you have equity, right? Which is like, oh, fund this and you're gonna get, you know, 100x returns for, for, for something. So all of this, all of these layers have their own sets of complexities and regulatory complexity as well. But that's what excites me. That's what excites me about Nostra because we can create a permissionless economy, right? Like truly. Um, and because we have identity, we can ascribe certain actions to a degree of, of risk and trust, right? And reputation. So because Nostra gives us that, we don't need, I mean, the way that I see it is you don't need the state anymore because not everyone's not just an anonymous guy because you have a history and a proof of work and years of work to, to build up personas. That proof of work is collateral. Collateral you can use. Yeah, you can take in a hundred thousand dollars and just fuck everyone and just take the money and run away with it. But wouldn't that be more, more practical if, you know, if you spent, you know, you know, if you spent 10, 10 years working out a persona on Twitter or on Noster, sorry, and you're Walker, like, and you take a $10,000 $10, loan, like you might as well do something good with it, right? So I think to, to, to my mind, that's from, to me sounds like something super, super exciting. And uh, because again, it doesn't rely on the third party that necessarily gets in the way and, and becomes that trusted third party that, um, uh, can issue loans or uh, you still will have parties that identify the risk, you know, and, and, and do all that sort of background work. But essentially, it's a peer to peer economy where people make their own decisions. People are adults, they're not children, they can take loans if they feel like it. And, they, and if they feel like it, you, you would give loans like with with um, with Yusuf, wouldn't you want to give him a $100,000 loan, you know, You'd rather give him a donation because it's right, but because the trust is accumulated, if if the the conflict is, disappears and he wants to build a hospital, like that's one guy who will actually fucking build a hospital, you know. So because of that, I think we we the the reliance of the state when it comes to matters of and and, and, and traditional banks, um, when it comes to things like uh, uh, like lending uh, and and equity and investments, just becomes a lot lo a lot more nil. So. I'm just excited to just see like, and not even just beyond geyser, just, I want people to build this stuff. You know, I want people to, to, to just start experimenting and there are experiments already happening like Nostra rocket that are trying to, trying to fulfill that vision and it'll take a lot of trial and error, but I think that's the, that's the direction we need to go. We need to just build, continue building on this parallel system that doesn't require any, you know, government you know, type uh, approval or certification or, or whatever. Because again, these are systems in place that are exclu incredibly exclusionary to, to quote Ray Youssef, who talks about financial apartheid. We live in a world of financial apartheid. People in, in other countries around the world cannot use, cannot use a, or cannot use very easily um, even just banking, plain banking, but also just like, imagine trying to, you know, s do an equity crowdfund to open a, to open a, you know, a, a, an ice cream shop in, in Lagos, like who's, you know, there's no tool for that, right? But uh, there's such a role to play for Bitcoin as technology to really lift all boats here. And we just have to build, and then tying in Bitcoin with Nostra, we can really, go beyond just one-on-one -on -one donations, but like really take the social graph and use that for, for, I don't, for, for, for creating an emerging economy, really. I think that the sky's the limit. I, I, I love that. And I, you know, I think one of the things that, uh, for something like Noster, it's still very much obviously in its infancy, right? It, it's improved, uh, an insane i started using it early december 2022 after i saw uh, will kasser and post about it on on twitter and have have been hooked ever since and and right now a lot of the 
the current use cases are around social media because that's like, you know, build what you know, build the things that the people want, build the things that are pro-social and that are going to bring in new people to start using this this protocol. But I completely agree that it's going to it's already starting to blossom so much out from that into so many other use cases. And we're going to see uh, we're going to see so many more in the coming years here. And I also think that one of the things right now, you know, when it comes to Noster adoption, you've seen large adoption waves when big names come over and start using it and tell their followers on other networks, hey, go check this out. You can find me over here. And I, I may be saying some things over there that I'm just not going to say any, anywhere else. This happened with with Jack. It happened with uh, with Snowden. It happened with someone like, like Lynn Alden, uh, people who have really large followings and who a lot of people care about what they have to say. And there's certain things they're only going to do and say on Noster. And that's really powerful. And I think we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of different like content creators as well start to move over to Noster as they realize this is a place where I can actually uh, I can actually own my persona. I, I can't just have my light switch flipped off by YouTube or by X or by uh, or by Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And I think that that's really powerful. And so one of the other questions I wanted to ask you here is in terms of uh, in terms of geyser as it relates to content creators i think that this is another just very huge and, and obvious way for uh for geyser to grow as well and i know you guys have already been kind of adding some functionality uh, that, that kind of uh replaces a lot of the stuff that patreon does for example things that you know allow content creators to get paid can you talk a little bit about uh, you know, what, what's the, the pitch, uh, uh, the geyser pitch to content creators who say, you know, they, they want to different ways to monetize their content, different ways to monetize their brand, different ways to grow their audience and give perks to their audience. What's the, wh why should they care about and check out geyser? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good question. So if you're a creator, you need a, a simple way to get donations and then sell, sell perks and geyser just helps you do that really really easily um you also want a place where you can showcase you know as a creator you have your own persona you have your own your own your own nostra profile your own twitter profile geyser just gives you that project that project that allows you to um you know essentially ha showcase the vision of what's the idea here and um that project then can be you know, again, selling selling perks, um, can be receiving donations. You may even have a goal, right, where you want to, um, uh, you know, showcase that you're trying to reach this goal to achieve a certain target and buy a new microphone or whatever. Well, Geyser makes it really easy to to be transparent about that, and in terms of showcasing what your goal is and where you want to go. Um, and and then yeah, in, in in time we will be adding more creator tooling around. You know things like subscriptions and maybe having a place where um, not all the content gets you a, a subscriber or a member. Um, that's definitely something we're gonna be, uh, you know, doing more of. Um, but to be, but to be frank, I think when I think about like the value add, I think um, more and more it'll become clear that I think a lot of the products end up becoming a key functionality functionality for for geyser so because again with uh with Noster, you can get zapped pretty easily but uh and then you know more and more functionality exists around selling goods as well on Noster too but um but i think that's where i think that the key a key kind of big edge for geyser is at the moment is really just uh selling products you know limited editions they could be sponsorships they could be uh, physical products, they could be merch, uh, they could be experiences. And so as a creator, using Geyser as a bit like your marketplace um, can be a really good way just to monetize additionally uh, on top of like the, 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 the value for value donations. And from what we've seen in terms of like projects that are using Geyser and like, you know, like podcasting 2.0 is that like 75% of all value generated for podcasters actually coming from just like donations on geyser and the uh, selling rewards on geyser um so definitely recommend podcasters just looking at geyser as a, as a because again you can receive donations on lightning but also on chain right and so on chain donations are much higher value than 
21 sets uh, zaps uh, on podcasting 2.0 um, but also really importantly it's really just cracking the user experience because in a lot of these podcasting 2.0 apps which you know I love like fountain and, and wave like a lot of the times you have you're relying on an in an in-app wallet and um, and that's great but most people are just really don't like having to have a wallet for every single app. And so guys, makes it possible for people to get funded from other apps, right? So you could be sending a transaction from your Trezor wallet, right? That's what you want. You want people to tap into their Trezor wallet and send you a donation through that. So again, I think just setting up a project on Geyser is a no brainer. We are simply, you know, uh, you know, very humbly, the best at like making it possible, making it easy for people to, to fund your fund you, um, by making it super easy for people to fund you, um, and uh, and then increasingly enough, increasingly as well, just helping you sell rewards, and that's going to be a key area that we're going to be focusing on in the in the future. That's awesome, and I would also suggest that uh, uh, that people send uh, money from their uh, their Bitbox O2 Bitcoin only hardware wallet, as as Bitbox is a longtime sponsor of this show. Definitely uh, had had to, of course put that plug in there, um, and you can go to the show notes if you want to want to get uh, some percents off that uh, fully open source hardware wallet. With that said. Um, I want to be conscious of your time here and just is, I've got a completely unrelated question for you to, to wrap things up, but anything, uh, anything else you, uh, that we didn't cover today that you, that you wanted to talk about at all, uh, anything that, that we missed, I know we covered a lot and I really appreciate your time. Yeah. I mean, what I'd like to say to just to, to, to wrap it up is, 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 you know, we, we need you guys like. There's this uh, this rule that Stelios, my co-founder, told me recently. What is the ninety nine one rule? I think, <laughs> which is ninety percent of people are lurkers on social media and so forth, and nine percent are kind of like a little bit active, and they are uh, you could say the zappers, the like the contri the contributors on Geyser, and one percent are the creators, and that this is a natural law of 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 the world of society. You know the ninety. 90% are, you know, have their jobs and have their own stuff. But what I'd urge you guys to do is just, is, is, um, is, yeah, is, is to remember that, that for the 9% of you, your contributions really matter and really, really have a difference. And for the, for the 1% of you, the, um, your contributions, your creations, your podcasts, your, 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 your community meetups, uh, all of that also matters. You really are changing the world. Um, and the 90% of you, well, get going, <laughs> you know, start creating stuff, uh, start contributing to projects. There are so many ways for you to be involved in, in Bitcoin um, beyond lurking. Just get out there, launch your project, you know, start your podcast. Uh, you know, this is the type of stuff that really will, will will change you, that will make you feel alive. Because here we're building stuff for the future, for the next generations, and we're gonna need builders. So, and eventually you're gonna be building a Bitcoin. So, might as well start early. So that's what I like to think. I think everyone's a creator, and it's just a matter of timing. You know, when do you want to get started? Well, I'd say get started right away, as the world is burning. No better time to start rebuilding the world. Amen to that, and that's a that's a, a perfect note to end on. And uh, I, the other question I was going to ask you is just uh, unrelated, but I'm always curious: uh, what are people reading? Are you reading anything right now? And then, and if not right now, is there a, a book that you always recommend that people read? Uh, can take either one of those, both, however you'd like. Yeah, good question. I'm trying to finish Atlas Shrugged. I'm like eighty percent of the way. It's uh... It's been taking me a long time. It's a big yeah. one, but yeah. it's uh, it's definitely worth it. I really recommend people to read that one. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else I would probably recommend. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got for now, man. I haven't been reading much mm. lately. That's okay. <laughs> you mentioned la layered money earlier. Layered money is good. Another, yeah. No, that, that, that'll do it. And then the last thing I would ask you is, uh, where do you want to send people? They can go to geyser.fund. Um, I'll link, uh, I'll link Yousef's, uh, geyser 
uh, project, and I'll uh, I'll link your article as well in the show notes. Anywhere else people should go to to learn more to get involved? Yeah, I think that's a really good start. Um, you can also go to our about page about and drop your your email in there if, in case you want to get uh, monthly updates on on what's been cooking in Geyser. Um, and, and as I said before, go on geyser.fun slash launch to launch your project. And, and I've got to say, it, it truly it truly is easy. I mean, I did it today in a, a number of minutes uh, before the show. And so, Mike, I just want to thank you for your time. You know, Bitcoin is scarce, but Bitcoin podcasts are abundant. So thank you for sharing <laughs> your scarce time on another fucking Bitcoin podcast. No, I really great, appreciate man. it. And uh, this was this was a really enjoyable conversation. No, a pleasure, man. Pleasure's mine. Can't wait to listen to the new ones coming up as well. And that's a wrap on this Bitcoin Talk episode of The Bitcoin Podcast. If you are a Bitcoin-only company interested in sponsoring another fucking Bitcoin podcast, head to bitcoinpodcast.net slash sponsor. If you are enjoying the Bitcoin podcast, consider giving this show a five-star review wherever you listen or sharing the show with your network. Cut. If you're enjoying the Bitcoin podcast, consider giving the show a five-star review wherever you listen or sharing the show with your friends, family, and strangers on the internet. Or don't, Bitcoin doesn't care, but I always appreciate it. You can find me on Noster by going to primal.net slash walker. If you want to follow the Bitcoin podcast on Twitter, go to at Titcoin podcast and at Walker America. You can also find the video version of this podcast at youtube.com slash at Walker America and at Walker America on Rumble. Or just go to bitcoinpodcast.net slash podcast and find links everywhere. Bitcoin is scarce. There will only ever be 21 million, but Bitcoin podcasts are abundant. So thank you for spending your scarce time to listen to another fucking Bitcoin podcast. Until next time, stay free. Bitcoin.